and welcome to another video of the series dimensional battles 101 for this one we will be focusing on the edit controls and what you can customize now pretty much in a previous video in the series i explained the view or eye icon if you click on it it pretty much removes all that colorful text which gives you the advantage of viewing the map more conveniently there's the zoom in and zoom out functionality which you can use normally no problem you can click on the fortress you want to view and pretty much it gives you a convenient view that doesn't have too much information now aside from that lovely eye view icon you see that lovely colorful pop-up message text that shows you which player captured what fortress right if you click on it directly it will take you to the battlefield briefing or the battlefield brief in the battlefield brief it has a record of every single player who fought another player and who won in the battle now the information you can see will also tell you who captured what fortress which team which player from that union if you click on the video icon you'll be able to view the battle itself it helps in if you want to view the battle why did you win why did you lose what exactly happened right so that view really helps to give you a perspective on what exactly is happening as you can see right now we've already talked about the map before the gameplay guidance which you can check we'll just add one point different fortresses have different merit points that will be activated when you capture it yes it's equal to more points having certain fortresses captured in under your team or union so what does that mean exactly there is a fortress illustration as you can see if you see and look closely there's the points 60 per hour 60 per hour and then a fortress 24 per hour and s fortress 9 60 per hour right so the highest are the a fortresses and that pretty much means having an a fortress instead of a b or another letter has more value in terms of generating merit points and that will equal the following more points equal higher ranking for your union and equal higher ranking for your individual record these merit points and you gain more rewards Pretty much we're going after the rewards so going after a fortresses is much better in generating merit points than going after b or c so keeping a fortresses is higher in points and has more advantages than maintaining c or b pretty much the merit points is what ranks your union higher gives you ranking rewards and individual ranking higher why because you gain merit, more merit points per hour now it is optional if you want to follow my direction of what i advise you see that s1 fortress it unlocks automatically uh, the second day of the dimensional battles right what i would advise is to take as much as the a1 a2 a8 a7 a6 a5 a4 and a3 as the main target for your attack during the entire season why because the quests will be probably probably one of them or something closer to them that's one two when s1 fortress unlocks your plate you will be pretty much close to it and can attack it easier from all directions yes it's a st strategical direction of how to position and attack so the more fortresses you have surrounding it the easier for you also to expand in different directions because it oversees every single part of the map so garrison in the middle of the map is more advised for moving now as you can see currently i have zero attack charges so i cannot attack i have reinforcement charges but that will only allow me to move heroes into different fortresses now since i want to be nice and not leave everyone to suffer I'm gonna move at least all my teams together in one fortress and I'm gonna choose the A6 why because they will every union will try to take it and attack it while I'm not sorry 
while I'm not available. By the way, when it freezes and you cannot move, you just need to exit and re-enter. And aside from everyone will at some point ha hate that quick positioning direction, it is what it is. Right, so I'm going to select all the different teams I have. Total 5 I can move. Click on move. And voila. They're populating now the fortress. What does that actually help? Right? If you go to the defender. The defenders. You can see the morale. Right? They're all good. 6 out of 6. And it will generate more merit points. As you can see. See that? Plus 35. And then there's the bonus for capturing it for the first time. And the income, 10, right, is now 60. So the more teams you actually reinforce in an A fortress, you gain more points. Gaining more points equal higher ranking and equal, again, sorry, I keep going into the wrong one. Equal, the union ranking will increase by the points generated per hour, will increase higher and faster in number. The ranking will change tomorrow from 41 it will go up based on all the merit points that will be collected which equals more better rewards here which equals the added total of the merit points for the union upper ranking hopefully this point this is the entire union players generated merit points combined together so the higher everyone can generate points the higher they will rank the higher they will rank the higher they will get rewards and so on that's why I put my entire five teams here to garrison it. So I gain more points while doing absolutely nothing and leaving the other unions to attack my teams. And that will also give me the battlefield rewards. Now to finish off this part, the battlefield rewards is pretty much what you gain by battling and winning in battle against another player. Uh, you earn the also the union points, which I just consider it merit points. It's all the same, right? You gain it by garrison, doing a garrison in a fortress, capturing it, etc., etc. So one is for victorious in battle, one is for attacking other players, and one is for degenerated points for the fortress capture and maintaining. And pretty much these points you'll gain directly the rewards as you can see. I've already gained all these lovely looking rewards on day one. Now on day two we'll look at the limited quests. Day three the last limited quest which is I think a total of two or three. right? And then the dimensional juggernaut will be the last stage after the time has come for the season to end. The season to be jolly. The season will end on the 9th. The Dimensional Juggernaut will be summoned and after one day, 24 hours, you will have the opportunity to battle him. Gain a maximum of 20 points by causing a specific number of damage and you will gain automatically the reward for every player in your union. If you don't gain the 20 points, no one gets anything. Now, this season has two days-ish and part of today remaining and then season over. Then we'll have to wait for a new season to start. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Do check out the playlist for the Dimensional Battles. Leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you like this content. Share it with your Union team members so they understand how to go about the Dimensional Battle. And it becomes more challenging and everyone gets a shot at the lovely rewards. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day ahead.